The dark tried to hide you and steal you away And death tried to keep you inside of the grave The enemy fought you, he tried but he lost You cannot be stopped Tore down the wall. The weight of our burdens, you carried it all. Our fears, our fears and our failures hang dead on the cross. You cannot be stopped. Every voice in this place. Move around mountains, break the chains. Jesus has triumphed over the grave. Sing hallelujah, the battle is won. Nothing can stand against our God. We stand on your victory. We shout out your praise. Oh, miracle maker, your mind.
Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9, there's a story of a, of a man who came to Jesus and his son was mute. He couldn't speak. And he came to Jesus and he asked Jesus to heal his son. And Jesus said, well, how long has he been like this? And the man said, from birth. And oftentimes it gets so bad that this spirit that is bothering him seizes him and throws him into the fire, throws him onto the ground. And Jesus said to him, if you believe, all things are possible. If you believe, he can be healed. And the man in that moment looked at Jesus and he said, I believe. And then he added this, but help my unbelief. But help my unbelief. And Jesus prayed and the boy was delivered in that very moment. And the message for you this morning is you may be finding yourself in a place where you are just on the edge of believing, just on the edge of trusting him for that miracle, that promise that he's given you. Maybe you're going back and forth because you haven't seen it. And his message to you this morning is all things are possible through me. Just believe and I will help you in your unbelief. He knows exactly where you are this morning. He knows exactly what you're struggling with this morning. And I'm here to tell you that he is more than able to meet your need. He's more than able to bring you through. And even in those times when you look at that situation and you look at the struggle that's in front of you and you're wondering, is it really possible? He says, I'm going to help you in your unbelief. I'm going to help you in that moment. That's the God that we serve this morning. And so I don't know who that's for this morning, but maybe you find yourself in that place where you say, Lord, I just need you to show up. I just need you to do something in my life. Lord, I need to be able to trust you for something deeper, and I'm struggling to trust you for that, Lord, but I know that your word is true. I want to pray with you. I want to open these altars up, and if you have a need this morning, if you need prayer for physical healing this morning, you need prayer for anything you're struggling with, or if this word just spoke to you and you need prayer this morning, we're going to pray for you. Continue to worship him this morning. Continue to press in while we're praying. This is your time. We specifically set this time aside for you guys so that we can agree with you in prayer. And so don't hesitate to come up if God's speaking to you this morning. Nothing worth more than I could 
twisted and sick of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is
Mother's Day, 
And I know for some of you, this may be a very difficult day because your mother is no longer here. You might find yourself in a place this morning where you're still grieving her loss. Maybe this is the first Mother's Day since she's passed. And I simply want to pray for you this morning. And I want people around you to be able to pray for you also. And so if that's you this morning, you say, Pastor Vic, I've lost my mother. I'm still grieving my mother's loss. And this is a tough day for me. If you just raise your hand, I want to pray for you this morning. So if you're around these who have raised their hands, would you just lay hands on them just as a point of contact? And let's pray. And let's trust that God is going to comfort as only he can. So, Father, we're just coming before you this morning. And, Lord, I know that you see every hand that's raised this morning, Lord, and you know the cry of their heart, Lord, and the grief and the emptiness that is there because of the loss, Lord. But, Father, I know that in all of that, Lord, that you can comfort. Lord, I know in all of this, Lord, that you can make your presence known. And so that's exactly what I'm asking that you would do in this moment. Lord, I'm asking that they would sense your presence, Lord, that they would know that you are there. Lord, I'm asking that you would comfort as only you can. And, Lord, I'm asking that you would strengthen them in their walk, Lord, and strengthen them as they go forward into this day. Lord, I'm asking that you would bring back the great memories that they had. Lord, that you would somehow, out of all of it, Lord, bring joy to their heart as they remember. But, Father, we give it to you this morning, Lord, and we stand around them, Lord, with our arms around them, Lord, our hands on them. And, Lord, we just simply say we love them, Lord, just as you love them. So, Lord, I'm asking that you would let that be known to them this morning. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Amen. God has certainly met us in this place this morning. Why don't you greet somebody before you sit down? Very good morning to everyone. I'd like now to dismiss our children to their class. That hasn't been done. Children, be blessed. Pastors have already prayed for the classes. As we were worshiping God and all through the morning, the scripture kept coming to me that God knew us in our mother's womb. Which says, as Pastor said, Happy Mother's Day, ladies. Thank you for being such wonderful people. But the thing that comes to me about that is that he knew us in our mother's womb. That means that he knows everything about us and he helped form us. That means he knows where we are right here today. And we're all here in a different place, a different age, and going through different circumstances in our lives. But God knows exactly where we are. And that's so comforting because we so, so often wonder, how am I where I am? What, what is this that's happening in my life? But God already knows what's happening in our life. And that is so comforting to know that. And we wonder, how are we going to get through situations? But God is already working it out. Is that incredible? Our lives are predestined in Christ. So if you're in Christ and Christ is in you today, take comfort, take courage. Wow, I don't know about you, but that just excites me. 
Because I need that. And we all need that to know that he's with us. If God is for you, who can be against you? Satan himself can't come against us. Think about that. That's incredible. But we need to take hold of that, church. We need to take hold of that. Thank you, Jesus. Well, we are moving on in the kingdom of God. Are we not? God is doing some incredible things in this church, in his church. Next week, I want to remind you all, we have a business meeting scheduled, and that is coming up. It'll be following the service, about 15, 20 minutes. I say that. You know how we are. If we can get back together in here in 15 to 20 minutes after the service, I'll be surprised. But the meeting should only be about 30 or so minutes. We hope. We plan. So we don't want to be, you know, hanging around too long. We've got to go get some lunch. You know that. And then we'll be starting, is it called foundation classes, beginner classes? This is the first three weeks of June. Membership classes. Thank you, sir. And as with that said, let's go to our offering time. And something that strikes me about the offering is that it tells us that it's in giving that we receive. But we don't give just to receive. I hope that's not the case. God will still bless you even if that's true. Because he's not going to be beholden to anyone. He's not going to be obligated. But there are laws of physics and laws in life that if we do something good, good's going to come back. It's true. So when you give liberally, it's going to be given back to you liberally. That's not the reason to do it. But I'm just telling you the way it works. So as you prepare and you say, Lord, what should I do? How much do you want God? Give as much as you want of God. Not just monetarily. I'm talking about our lives, right? So let's, let's pray. Lord, help us to understand what that giving really means. It's not just money. It's every part of us. It's all of our thoughts. It's our desires, our intentions of what we're doing when we give of time and money and love to people and bless what we do for your name's sake. Amen. We have a video to watch here. Amen. If you're a mom today, I want to wish you a happy Mother's Day once again. You know, when you look at that video, it just puts it all into perspective. And I'm just amazed at all that you do as mothers. I'm amazed at everything that I watch my wife do and everything that she's done over the years with our kids, my own mother. I watch you and I understand how much it is that you really do on a regular basis. And it's just immeasurable when you really start to think about it. And I just want you to know we appreciate you, and we honor you this morning. You, amen? Amen. The story is told of a husband who came home from work one day, and as he drove up and he parked, he noticed that his three kids were actually outside in the backyard playing unattended in the mud. He saw the front door was open to the house. He saw that his wife's car doors were actually open also, and as he walked in, he walked past a couple empty cereal boxes that were in the front lawn and some various wrappers that were there. He walked into the house, and he found even a bigger mess. He saw on the couch what appeared to be sugar poured out on the love seat, and he saw the dog running around crazily as it, it had been eating the sugar. <laughs> he, walked, he walked into the kitchen and there were broken things on the floor. The dishes were full. There were clothes that were strewn around everywhere that he could see. And he began to get very concerned. And so he ran upstairs looking for his wife. He found her in the room, laying in the bed, reading a book. She <laughs> smiled. And she said to him, hey, how was your day? And he looked at her and 
trying to figure it all out, and he said, what's going on here? And this is her response. She said, you know how every day you come in and you ask me what it is exactly that I do every day? <laughs> well, today I didn't do any of that. <laughs> today I didn't do any of it. Really, really puts it into perspective, you know. And when you think about all the hats that you wear as a mom, and you think about all the things that you do as a mom, it's amazing. You know, we could never compensate you for the things that you do. Salary.com, if you would go there, and there's a, uh, there's a, a mother salary deal there, you know, where you just put in how many kids do you have? Are you working inside the home? Or are you also working outside the home? If you went there and you just said, I've got three children who are in school age, and you ask the question, how much would we have to compensate you? You'd be surprised. Maybe, guys, you're going to be surprised. Every guy in here is going to be saying, Pastor Vic, stop it right now. <laughs> $224,000 a year. If you added up all the various jobs, all the various roles that a mom handles, and she does it so well, and she does it without complaining most of the time and selflessly does all of these things, and we appreciate you again so much. You know, as I was looking at this sermon, and I'm trying to figure out which direction do I want to go in this sermon, you know, the, the go-to sermon for Mother's Day for many people is the Proverbs 31 woman. You know the Proverbs 31 woman. She is a superstar. She does everything exactly right. She's up in the morning before it even gets light. She's the, the Bible tells us that her lamp never goes out, even at night. She's working 24-7. She goes out to the marketplace, and she buys and sells. She considers a piece of property, and then she buys it, and she sells it for a profit, and she brings her husband good things all the days of his life and never any evil things. And the list goes on and on and on. And yet I love the beginning of that scripture because we, we pass over it so many times. Solomon asked the question. He said, he said, this woman, who can find her, right? He said, who can find her? And it's the point that he's trying to make that we're not perfect. It's the point that he's trying to make as he lays all of these things out, that yes, these are great qualities, these are great traits that, that everyone should have, not just a, a virtuous woman, not just, not just a mother should have, but that we should all have these traits in our lives. But he realizes the reality of the fact that we're there every single day, right? And we struggle sometimes every single day. There's another story about a woman who's shopping in Walmart, and she's got her little two-year-old uh, daughter there with her, and she's strapped into the cart, and the daughter is absolutely pitching a fit throughout the store. She finally gets up to the checkout line. The daughter is still pitching a fit. And as she's coming up to the checkout line, she starts to talk, and she says, It's all right, Ellen. We'll be finished soon, Ellen. We're going to be done in just a minute, Ellen. And she keeps saying this. She keeps talking. And as she gets up to the line, the cashier looks at her in that moment, and she says, she says man, she said, I'm so impressed by the patience that you're showing for little Ellen. At that point, the mom looks at the cashier, and she says, I'm Ellen. <laughs> okay? I'm, I'm, I'm talking to myself. I'm not talking to this child. I'm talking to myself. I'm trying to make my way through. You see, that's the reality. That's more of the reality, I think, of where we find ourselves every single day. And guys, this message isn't just for moms, so I need you to, I need you to pull out of this message those truths that you can pull out of those messages because we all find ourselves, and moms, I know sometimes we find ourselves in the place where maybe you feel like Ellen. You're wondering if the struggle is all worth it and the, the hours and the effort, if it's all worth it. Maybe you come to the place where you feel tired and you feel worn out this morning. Maybe you're questioning if you're even up to the challenge of what you have before you, especially with the kids. And maybe you are even more upset as you see what may be your own failures and your own shortcomings, wondering if you'll ever get it right and wondering how you're going to make it through. And maybe you're questioning your own ability to be the mother and the parent that God has called you to be. Maybe that's the place that you find yourself this morning. And I'm here simply this morning for just a few minutes to tell you this. It's worth it. 
in the end, the effort and the time and the energy that you spend pouring into your kids, pouring into your family, pouring into your wife and your husband, your spouse, it is worth it in the end because God will take the fruit of what you are doing and it will have long-lasting effects. I know that some of you may be here this morning and your kids are grown and some of them may not be serving the Lord today. And I want to tell you as parents, as mothers, don't lose hope, but continue to pray for them because the Bible tells us that if we train up a child in the way that they should go, that when they are old, they will not depart from it. And I'm trusting in lives that I'm trusting even I've trusted in my own life that what we poured into our children is not going to come back void, but at some point, at some time, God is going to get a hold of them. He's going to bring to remembrance those things that you faithfully taught them, and he's going to do a work in their life. And we've seen that happen in the lives of our own children as God brings them back. And I'm here to encourage you this morning that it's all worth it. Galatians 6, 9 tells us this, let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not lose heart. I know so many times we put that scripture in the context of doing good to others and working for the gospel and working for the kingdom, but that scripture applies to you and to me today, especially in our own home, in those moments when we would get worn out, in those moments where we're just tempted to give up, and just throw the towel in, God would say, don't be weary in doing good. Keep at it. Keep moving forward. Keep pressing in because in due season you will reap a reward if you do not lose heart. And so be encouraged. And I'm also here to tell you that if you find yourself in a place where you're tired and you're wondering if it's worth it, you don't know the direction to go, that you need to keep your eyes on the Lord in this time, in those moments especially, to keep your eyes on the Lord, and he will supernaturally give you the strength to make it through. You say, how am I going to make it through? How am I going to get through this season in my life? How am I going to do all those things that I know I should be doing when my schedule is so full and I don't have even a moment to myself? And I would say it has to start by keeping your eyes fixed on the Lord because he is the one. And he alone is the one who's going to give you the strength and the courage and the ability and the anointing to make it through every single day. Isaiah chapter 40. I love this scripture. We've, we've heard it so many times. And this is what the Lord says. The Lord says, have you not known, have you not heard that the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints or is weary? I love that because it tells me that God is always there. He's always on the job. When I feel worn out, when I feel that I don't have an answer, when the challenge is too big for me, when I don't know how I'm going to make it through today and get to tomorrow, when life is overwhelming me, the one thing that I know in my life is I serve a God who is never weary and he never faints. He never tires out. He is always there for me and I can run to him in the day of trouble. I can find refuge in him and I can find strength and support and anointing to make it through the day and to make it through the challenge that lies ahead. You ought to say amen to that this morning because that's who we serve. That's who he is. He supernaturally is there and he never takes a vacation day. He never takes the day off. He never walks away. He, he never, when we call him, he never says, hey, I'm going to have to call you back because I'm on the other line. <laughs> he never does this to us when we're talking to him. But he always makes time for us. He's always there. He always opens his door and he says, come into my presence. He always says, if you will meet me, I will meet you. He always says, if you will draw near to me, I'll draw near to you. That's where you have to remain and understand when you go through those times of struggle and times of turmoil in your life. And it goes on to say his understanding is unsearchable. You see, he knows everything that there is to know about you, about your situation, about those things that you're facing. He knows everything that there is to know about this universe. And when we think about his understanding being unsearchable, 
Here's what we typically think. We typically think, man, God is so much higher than I am, and he is. His knowledge is so much greater than I am, and and, and my knowledge, and it is. He's so much more powerful than I am, and, and he is. But his knowledge is unsearchable. Do you know his knowledge of you, his knowledge of where you're at, his knowledge of uh, of everything that's going on in your life? His knowledge is unsearchable. He knows exactly where you're at at every moment. You see, you don't have to, when you get into his presence and you start to pray, you don't have to bring him up to speed as to where you're at, right? That's our laundry list that we bring to the Lord. Now, Lord, you know I'm going through this. Lord, you know I need finances for this. Lord, you know the car just broke down. Lord, you know the kids are driving me absolutely crazy. Lord, you know I haven't had a day off in all this time. Lord, you know I'm struggling personally. And what God says is, hey, I know all that. I already understand that, right? What he's looking for from us is just to get into his presence and surrender, right? To get into his presence and know that we're in his presence and take a sigh of relief and give it over to him and find peace and comfort and rest in that place because he knows exactly where we're at. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young man shall utterly fall, but those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. You're tired this morning. You're worn out this morning. You know, the Bible says even in the natural, even in the natural, young men will utterly fall. Even in the natural, youths will faint. We all get worn out. We all get tired. And as I get older in life, as his body continues to age, I understand that a little better than I did 20 years ago. I understand that it's easier for me to get worn out. It's easier for me to get tired. It's easier for me not to just get Uh, physically tired, but to get spiritually worn out. And what God is saying is, hey, I know all of that, but if you will wait on me, if you will get into my presence, if you will trust in me, I'm going to do something incredible. I'm going to renew your strength. I'm going to take you to a place where you're not only going to walk, but you're going to run. I'm going to take you to a place where you're not only going to run, but you're actually going to mount up with wings like an eagle and you are going to soar. How many of you are ready this morning to get off the ground and start soaring? How many of you are ready this morning to really walk in God's goodness and really walk in that peace and really walk in that victory? You know, that is available. That's just not some theory that's out there. It's what God has said and the key to it The key to it, moms, the key to it, dads, the key to it, everybody, is to get into his presence. You see, I have to learn that in my own life because what happens in my life, and I know, moms, what happens in your life so many times is things just continue to press in. Things just continue to pile on. And there's always something to do. There's always another phone call to make. There's always something that you got to to clean up. There's always somebody that you've got to run after and and look after. And I know that many of you are, are just coming to the place where if you can just get five or ten minutes alone, you you consider that to be a tremendous, tremendous victory. I'm going to tell you right now, God knows where you're at, and it's his desire that you would get into a place of being in his presence. And so I want to encourage you to make time for the Lord. He is the most important relationship that you're ever going to find and ever going to have. If you, want, if you want to be the, the Christian that God has called you to be, you want to be the dad that God has called you to be, you want to be the mom that God has called you to be, you want to be the person that God has called you to be, that strength, that anointing comes from one place. It all flows out of your relationship with him. Be still and know that I am God. They shall run, they will not be weary, and they shall walk, and they shall not faint. And then I want to encourage you Again, to continue to wait upon the Lord. Psalm 34 says this. This is David. He said, I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all of my fears. Do you have confidence this morning that when you seek the Lord that he hears you? Do you really know that when you seek the Lord, when, whenever it is, you could be driving across the causeway and something is on your heart and you cry out to the Lord and you begin to speak to him, you begin to get into his presence, that he actually hears you. Because if you doubt that this morning, I'm here to tell you that the Bible tells us that he hears us when we seek him, that he hears us. It's not, it's not news to him. 
It's not something that we have to go and find him because when we cry out, he is there. He is our heavenly father, and he delivered me from all of my fears. He delivered me from all of my fears. I don't know what your fears are, what your concerns are, what your anxieties are this morning, but I can tell you that if you want those things to go away, you got to get your eyes off of those things and get your eyes onto the Lord. Stop paying attention to the world. Stop paying attention to those distractions and fix your eyes on Jesus who is the author and the perfecter of your faith and he will put things into perspective. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full into his wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. We used to sing that song and it's a great song and it tells me when I get my eyes off of me, when I get my eyes off of my problems, when I start to look to Jesus and I get into his presence, things change in my life. My perspective changes. Why does my perspective change? Because I realize who he is and I realize that he is bigger than the thing that I'm facing. He is bigger than the struggle that I'm in. That's who we serve this morning. And he says this, he says, David said, and they looked to him, they looked to God and they were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. It's a transformation that happens when we get into his presence. You see, we get into his presence and he changes us and he does something and our outlook changes and, and it's visible on our face. We become radiant, right? We, we, become, we become changed in our outlook and, and we're no longer ashamed. We're no longer drawn down by those things that are coming against us. It's the transformation, again, that happens when we get into his presence. He said, this poor man cried out, and the Lord heard him, and he saved him out of all his troubles. Remember this, the angel of the Lord encamps about all who fear him and delivers them. How many of you know that scripture says this morning that the angel of the Lord, angels are encamping about you. You are never alone. Sometimes you find yourself in a place where you feel like it's all you. Have you ever been there where you feel like you're in this struggle all alone? Nobody understands it. Nobody sees it. Nobody's standing by your side. Nobody's standing in the gap for you. It is you against the world. I'm here to tell you that it's never you against the world because the king of kings is on your side and he has dispatched his heavenly host to encamp about you. And so when the attack of the enemy comes, you don't even have to fight off the enemy. All you have to do is stand back and look to him and allow God to do the work. The victory is ours, Scripture says, but the battle is the Lord's. Stop trying to fight God's battle. Stop trying to fight God's battle. I'm going to tell you in my life how many times I've tried to fight God's battle. Where God hasn't called me to fight that battle, God's called me to rest in Him. Trust in the Lord. Allow Him to fight that fight. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. And that's my desire for you. And then I want you to see, moms and dads, I want you to see how God sees you today. You see, so many times when we look at ourselves, we have a poor image of ourselves, and especially when we feel inadequate, especially when we struggle in life with things and, and we know that we're maybe not getting it right. But I want you to know Ephesians chapter 1 says this, that you are chosen by him. You are chosen by him. He looked at you, and, and in spite of everything that you look at in your life and you say it's wrong and it's bad and it's ugly and it's not desirable before the Lord, God looks at you and says, in Christ Jesus, I choose you. You're precious in his sight. You're not an afterthought to him. You're not second best to him. You're not second choice to him. But he looked at you and he said, yes, I choose you. You are bought with a price. You are bought with a price, the blood of Jesus Christ. You are precious in his sight. Never forget that. Never let the enemy tell you that you have no worth. Never let anybody around you pull you down and tell you that you have no value because the God of this universe says, I chose you. You're my own. You are my daughter. You are my son. I have chosen you, and I'm not going to forsake you or abandon you. And the second Corinthians chapter five tells us that we're the righteousness of God. The second Corinthians 5:21, "For he made him who knew no sin, Jesus, to be sin for us, that we may become the righteousness of God in him." I have to tell you, there are times in my life where I don't feel so righteous. There are times in my life where I understand 
who I am and I understand, you know, the things in my life that aren't pleasing to God. And in those moments, I have to remember that my righteousness doesn't come from me. It comes from Jesus Christ working in me. And I'm telling you this morning, don't let the enemy and don't even let yourself beat yourself up about failures that you've had in the past or struggles that you've had in the past. The Bible tells us when we When we give our life to Jesus and a transformation takes place, when we confess our sins, the Bible tells us he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all righteousness and unrighteousness. And in that moment, the greatest exchange that could ever happen happens. He takes my unrighteousness and and he puts it on Jesus and he takes Jesus's righteousness and he gives it to me. That's an amazing thing, and that's something that only he can do. And so when God looks at me, when he looks at you, he doesn't look. God the Father doesn't look at your sin. He doesn't look at your failure. He sees Jesus Christ. He sees Jesus' blood that was shed for you and applied to your life. That's why the Bible tells us in Romans, there's therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus who walk according to the spirit, not according to the flesh, right? And so I have this confidence in knowing that my righteousness doesn't come from me. It doesn't rest on me because if it rested on me, you might as well stick a fork in me, I'd be done, right? It, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't happen. I know where I would be because the Bible tells me for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. That's the God that you serve. He took away your shame. He took away your unrighteousness. He gave you his righteousness. Understand, that's who he sees you as being. So he sees you as being chosen. He sees you as being righteous in him. And then Romans 8 tells us this. He sees you as being more than a conqueror, more than an overcomer. You see, he sees you as being not just victorious, not just overcoming in life, not just not just grabbing the prize, but being more than that, being far beyond that, not just winning the prize, not just winning the race, not just winning the sporting event, but going much further than that. He gives you much more than you could ever ask for. His abundance is much greater than we could ever anticipate that it would ever be. We are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. You see, he looks at you and he says, I've called you an overcomer. I know you're struggling And you're wondering how you're going to make it through. I know you're struggling and you feel the weight of the world pressing in on you. And you wonder, are you doing things right? You wonder, how am I going to make ends meet? You wonder, how am I going to do everything that God has called me to do? How am I going to handle these three or four kids that I have that are driving me crazy every single day? And I just don't know if I have any more energy. And God says, you're more than a conqueror. You're more than an overcomer. Go in my strength, not in your strength. Spend time with me. Allow me to renew you. Allow me to strengthen in you because I'm going to give you exactly what you need to face today and to face tomorrow. That's the God that we serve. That's who he is, right? And he is able to take us wherever we find ourselves and he's able to put us where he wants us to be. You see, I I see Mary, the mother of Jesus, and I see how God chose her to be the mother of Jesus, not because she was divine She was a human just like us, and she needed a savior just like us, but she just happened to be chosen to give birth to the savior. And she raised him as God directed her to raise him. I mean, she changed his diapers, she wiped his nose, she loved him, she taught him, and she watched as Jesus died for our sins. An ordinary woman who became a very special mom. God has a calling for you, moms. God has given you a special calling. Those children that God has put into your care, those children that God has given you, that is a special calling that he has placed on your life. And never let anybody minimize the importance of what God has called you to do in the lives of your children. Who knows what God is going to do in and through your children as they grow. Your children may wind up doing incredible things for the kingdom. They may be very visible. They may be the next Billy Graham, but they also may be the next prayer warrior that God uses behind the scenes to change a generation. 
you have to understand that whatever God's calling is for your children, whatever his plan and purpose is for their life, it begins with the efforts that you're putting into them. It begins with the love that you're showing them and your commitment to them and, and the sacrifices that you're making. And I just want to tell you, it is all worth it in the end. Every moment of it, you won't look back and you won't regret any of it. My mind goes to Hannah, who is the, the mother of the prophet Samuel. She was a barren woman, and she wanted a child, and for many years she wasn't able to have a child, and uh, she was one of two wives that her husband had, and his other wife was able to have children, and she was shaming Hannah all the time, putting her down all the time, and Hannah found herself in the place where she was literally going to the temple. She was in the temple, and she was crying out to God that God would do something, and she was in such distress that, that Eli, the priest, looked at her and said, Get out of here. What are you, drunk? Because she was crying. She was crying out. And her mouth was moving, but she was praying to herself. And he thought that she was just intoxicated. And she said, she said, no. She said, I'm praying because I'm asking God to do something in my life. I'm asking him to give me a child. And she made a commitment in, in that place. She said, Lord, if you'll give me a child, I will commit this child to you. And God blessed her, and God gave her Samuel. And, and when Samuel was three years old, she wound up doing what she said she would do. How hard would that be to raise a child for three years, right? And to have that child with you and to love that child as only a mother can love a child, only to then give that child to the Lord and to, to take that child to the high priest and to say, okay, this child is now in your service and to turn around and walk away. But God blessed her. God gave her other children. God gave her a, a great marriage and gave her a great family. And God honored her commitment. And so, ladies, I want you to understand that the commitments that you make before God, he sees every one of them, and he's going to honor those commitments. God may never ask you to give your children to ministry or to do something that is that far out, but I'm just going to tell you the decisions that you make every day in giving your children to the Lord and praying for them and pouring your heart out to God. He sees it and he understands it and he honors those things in your life. I think of Bathsheba. She's not normally a woman who gets credited with being a good mother. She was an adulteress, but she was a mother who, even though she had a bad start, ended up with a great finish because she became the mother of Solomon. Solomon, the son of David, the king of Israel, the wisest man who ever lived. And I have no doubt that she had a huge part in Solomon's life. And so God was able to take her from a place where she had a past that was not pleasing to the Lord. And God brought her to a place where she was forgiven. And God literally, through her, continued the lineage going to Jesus Christ. And she literally became the mother of the wisest man who ever lived. I think of Rahab. The Bible tells us that she was a prostitute. You remember her from the story of the children of Israel uh, going in to take Jericho. And Rahab was there, and Rahab, Rahab helped them to escape. And she understood who God was. She was spared because she understood and turned her life over to the Lord. And she is, she is listed in the lineage of Jesus Christ. There's nothing that's really said about her mothering ability, but the very fact that she's listed in the genealogy tells me that it doesn't matter what our past is. It, does, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter how bad our past was or the failures that we had yesterday. God is able to take us from wherever we were and to forgive us and to cleanse us. You know, the Bible says he cleanses us from all unrighteousness. It's not just that he covers our unrighteousness with the blood of Jesus, right? He cleanses us. He takes those old filthy rags that we're wearing, the sin-stained rags that we're carrying, and he cleanses them and he replaces them with a robe that's a white robe, pure and spotless. You see, if I'm walking around in clothes that just have something painted over them and I know what's underneath, how many of you know I'm not really free? God doesn't do that. He doesn't just... Uh, he doesn't just apply the blood of Jesus. I love the fact that Jesus died for our sins. His blood cleanses us from unrighteousness. He makes all things new. 
He's able to change circumstances and situations. My mind goes to the Gentile woman in Luke who came to Jesus on behalf of her daughter against all social etiquette. She shouldn't have been there in the first place. And she goes to Jesus and she says, Jesus, I need you to touch my daughter. And Jesus looked at that lady in that moment and he said, but you're not even Jewish and so I can't. I've come for the, for the Jewish nation. That's who I've been sent to. And in that moment, she could have turned around and she could have walked away instead of pressing in. And she said, she said but Lord, even, even the dogs that are under the table get to share from the scraps that come off the table. And Lord, all I'm asking for is a couple scraps. And you know, Jesus honored her faith. So what's the point? Even when you think you don't deserve it, God is still there. Right. How many times do you get in front of God and you're, you're, you're praying and you're asking him to do something and in the back of your mind, the enemy is right there and he's saying, man, you're a dog. What are you even doing here, right? You don't deserve this. You're not righteous. You're not in a place where God has to give you anything or should give you anything. But Jesus looked and he responded to her faith. And I want to encourage you to stand in faith. There's so, many, there's so many other moms that I could talk about this morning in Scripture. It's Moses' mom who gave him up to save him. You remember that story? Moses is, is born, and at that point, Pharaoh is killing every baby boy. And yet his mother stood in faith, put him in a basket, floated him out on the Nile, and God turned that around to where she became his nurse. Don't tell me that God isn't able to work through impossible situations because God did and then I think about Timothy's mom and his grandmother. It's a great statement in, in the beginning of 2 Timothy in the first chapter. Paul looks at Timothy. He's writing this letter and he says, Timothy, he says, I recognize the faith that is in you, that same faith that your grandmother had and that same faith that your mother had, that it has been passed on to you. That's the most incredible thing of all, isn't it? The fact that God would give us the ability, mom, to pass our faith down to our children, to pass that on to the next generation. And I want to encourage you to keep on keeping on. I want to encourage you to keep on pressing in and to keep on trusting the Lord this morning. Nathan, you want to come up? There's another story. You know, sometimes these Mothers aren't straight up front, and you don't see what they're doing because they're doing it in the background. You all remember the story of the fishes and the loaves, the boy who was there with a multitude, and there was nothing for anybody to eat, and the disciples finally said, hey, we've got nothing to feed these people, but there's one boy who's here, and he's got a few fish, and he's got a few loaves, and what are those with such a big multitude? And Jesus performed a great miracle. You know, the real miracle that happened there, the real story that's there, is the fact that that boy had the fishes and the loaves in the first place. I think about that and I say, somebody packed that boy's lunch. Somewhere, there was a mom, maybe a dad, but somewhere there was a mom, there was somebody who cared enough for that boy to make sure that his lunch was packed, to make sure that when he got out there, he had everything that he needed for the day. You don't see that accolade in scripture. You see the miracle that happened. Moms, you never know what God is going to do through even the most routine things that you offer to your family and your children. And God is able to take those things and in the moment do incredible, incredible things. And I want to encourage you this morning in that to keep pressing on. And in those moments when you feel like you want to give up, not to give up, but to simply take a step back and to look to the Lord and say, Lord, I don't have to explain it to you because you know exactly where I'm at. And Lord, I need something that only you can give me. And I'm asking that you would give it to me right now. I titled this message, Unless the Lord Builds. Unless the Lord because I want to end with a scripture out of Psalm 127, and I believe that this is a word specifically for somebody this morning, and maybe many people, but as I was first starting to put this message together, the Lord took me to this scripture, and the Lord said, this is the real point that I want to make this morning. 
that I want you to make with moms, that I want you to make even with dads this morning. And it's simply this, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. Moms, dads, you got to know this morning that everything you do is important. That everything you do means something. But never, ever forget that unless God is building the house, unless God is setting a watch over the city, that our labors are in vain. And you got to look to him and you got to trust him in the good times. You got to trust him in the bad times and you got to give it to him every single day, every single moment. And you got to understand that God hasn't called you to build the house. God hasn't called you to simply just be the watchman in the city all by yourself. It's not all on your shoulders. It's not all your responsibility because unless God is involved, everything that you do is going to be in vain. But oh, when God is involved, when you get him involved and you put him first, incredible things happen. Because he gives you strength that you never thought was possible. He gives you that second wind. In those times when it's late in the afternoon and you feel like you just want to crawl in bed and you just need something extra from him and he begins to blow fresh life into you. In those times when your heart is absolutely breaking because one of your children has gone in a direction that you don't agree with and you know is not pleasing to the Lord or you've had an argument or some unsettling thing that's happened in your home and you just don't know which way to turn. In those moments, you've got to turn to him because unless God builds the house, it's all in vain. I, I want to encourage you. Why don't you stand with me? I'm going to close out and just pray for you today. I want to encourage you to let the Lord build the house. I want to encourage you to not feel like you got to do it all yourself. I want to encourage you to take exactly what God has given you and run with it and trust him that he is doing something incredible in your life, in you and through you, and in the life of your family as you're pouring into your family. Can I pray God's blessing over you this morning? Just trust him for fresh anointing, fresh strength, a fresh touch. Lord, I'm just coming before you, Lord, and I know that you know where everyone in this congregation is this morning. And Lord, I thank you for who you are. Lord, you are the one who restores our soul. You are the one who leads us beside the still waters. Lord, you are the one who walks with us, who never leaves us, who strengthens us in those moments when we are just looking, Father, for anything to help make it through. And Lord, I'm so thankful for that. And Lord, I'm praying for this congregation and I'm asking for a supernatural anointing upon this congregation, upon our moms, upon our dads, Lord, upon our kids. Father, I'm just trusting that you're taking us deeper, Lord, that you would lock into our thinking and into our spirit, that we would just press into you, Lord, just continue to pursue you. Lord, I'm asking that you would strengthen us for the calling that you have on our lives and that you would cause us to run the race, Lord, and to run it with strength, Lord, and to run it with boldness and to run it with power. Lord, I stand against every hindrance of the enemy. Lord, I stand against, Lord, everything the enemy would throw into our path to try to trip us up, to try to distract us, to try to take us off course. And Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I proclaim that we're going to make it through because of who you are. Lord, give us wisdom beyond our years. Lord, give us a heart of discernment and the ability to see everything that we need to see. And then, Lord, give us the courage and the boldness to do what you've called us to do. Father, we love you this morning. And then, Lord, I'm praying for Lynn this morning, Lord. I know that she's going, Lord, to have some things checked out, Lord, and Father, I'm just trusting, Lord, that your hand is upon her, Lord. And Father, I'm speaking health and healing over her in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I'm trusting that what they found, Lord, is not going to be serious, Lord. It's going to be benign in the name of Jesus. 
Lord, I'm asking, Father, that you would keep her in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank you this morning. Two things before you leave. Moms, we have a special gift for you. Ladies, even young ladies, we have a special gift for you also. Rose is going to be passing those out as you go out. And Nathan is going to be out and around with his camera taking pictures. If you would like to get family pictures with mom, I want to encourage you to do that. Have a great afternoon. I just want you guys to know we love you guys. It's our prayer that God blesses you wherever you're at and that he encourages you and he strengthens you in Jesus' name. God bless you guys.